Oh, good Lord. I look like I'm... All right, let's see how we're going to do this. Hi, welcome to Michelle Trina's Divorce Diary Show podcast. I typically don't start with my full name, but I'm going to for now, and why not? The brand is Michelle Trina and Divorce Diaries, but uh, Divorce Diaries is such a popular name um, in the sense of I had to do so much work to ensure that nobody else was using it for what, like what I'm doing. And even then it's, it's so difficult to fight for like a name that you choose. You have to go through links and trademarks. And even then, anyway, I don't know why I'm starting with that. Uh, hi, welcome to Divorce Diary Show podcast. And also we're going to be on the YouTube live. I just got a message from a follower who's really supportive of me. I'm going to give her a shout out. ADHD. She is on Instagram as coach Natalie. Uh, she is ADHD divorce. She's a life coach. Um, Natalie wrote to me, Hey, Michelle, uh, girl, you're in a commercial. Love seeing how well you're doing. Keep killing it sister. I'm in the Maley's cosmetics UGC commercial, which a UGC is user generated content. And I got this booking and it's, it's a decent amount of like, it's good. It's pay, it's a paycheck. And it's not just a paycheck, you're getting paid for what you wanted, to, you know, your craft. What is, why am I saying this? It's it's a paid gig, yes. I don't take non-paid gigs because I need to eat, so. <laughs> I am all over the place. So she's like, she, I, she's not the first one that has noticed me in this commercial for Maley's Cosmetics. I have it over here, actually. Oh. Okay, so I did this commercial, they send you the product. It actually works. I mean, I'll put it on right now and show you. So I think I was supposed to wash my face first. Yeah, it's supposed to get the bags out. I'm sweating though, so that might not work right now. Oh, not the bags. It's supposed to. I don't even know if you guys could hear me because I took the microphone away from my face. It's supposed to get the under puffiness away. So here we go. So um, I'm excited that people are seeing me in these little, these commercials that I'm doing. Uh, and by commercials, I mean this one. <laughs> this, the, I was in another commercial for Vitamin Shop, but I don't even know when they released it because no one's gotten back to me. I mean, I did the job, they paid me, and then they sent me the, the they sent me the actual commercial and said, don't share. So I was like, oh, all right, so it's gonna come out. Now, I noticed in the commercial for Vitamin Shop that the one actor, uh, a male actor who was with me on set that day, wasn't in it. And I was like, oh, they cut him and they replaced him. And I asked the other actress, I was like, hey, have you seen, like she was in it, I was in it. We didn't get cut, thank God. But I said, hey, do you know what happened with the commercial? Why was it ever released? The casting director's not answered me. She's like, I don't know, let me find out. Nothing from her either. So I'm assuming it didn't get released because I feel like I would have seen it. Who knows? Oh, well, um, it's like hit or miss. If you get a paycheck for an acting gig and sometimes it just doesn't happen. Like I was listening to a, a podcast that there was a, a, an actor in a big film and his, his, he was in like Thailand or something for six months. He did all this stunt work. And they cut his entire part out, but he got paid and everything. They just cut everything out from the movie. So the question is, would you mind that? Would you mind that you went through all of that and then your part was cut? I think the process is longer than the product sometimes, especially with theater, but for film, it stays there, right? I think it would bum me out, but it's like, well, at least I was still a part of the journey. It depends why they cut you too. They just cut you because it didn't make sense to the to the piece. That's one thing. But if they cut you because you're like, oh, you, you sucked, uh, then that would hurt too. But I guess it's just all a learning curve, you know? I mean, speaking of learning curves, I'm 40 and I feel like I'm still in middle school learning shit I should have learned in my 20s, but aren't we all? All right. I think this is starting to burn me. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. I actually just want to, I'm sweating so badly. I got to wash my face for a second. <laughs> okay. So I'm back. Um, I, I, uh, I wrote a little bit about what I wanted to talk about today, kind of gearing the episode in a, in a frame, frame of mind of, you know, obviously always what I'm going through. And yesterday I found out um, that I have cousins coming today. They're going to go in the little pool we have in our backyard. It's like an inflatable pool. I don't know if you guys can see it. Hold on, let me show you. <laughs> you can see 
see it there at the window, right? Okay. Everybody on YouTube just saw my messy windowsill now with the Millie's Cosmetics. So um, I went outside yesterday. And actually, I should go back. I My mom has to have surgery, spinal stenosis surgery on her back. And I'm very nervous. Should do a little off the shoulder right now. My mom has it. Okay. Uh, and because I don't, my dad had all these surgeries and it made his COPD worse. He had his knees replaced, he had his hip replaced. He had broke his femur bone right before all this. It was a mess. Now my mom does not have COPD. She was not a smoker. My dad was a heavy smoker for years. But I just feel like I don't know what this surgery is going to really do to her. And, and there's always a risk when you have a surgery. So I, you know, the doctors are insisting that it's something she needs to have to be able to walk better. Um, she walks fine, but she has like a little, like a, a wobble. And we were like, what is going on? She had physical therapy for a couple times. And they're like, well, if it still persists, you need to go to a neurologist. Now she took months to wait, take her time to go to the neurologist. And she went and they said, yeah, you need to have spinal stenosis, you know, surgery. And I, I mean, I can Google it right now because I get confused myself. But I think it's actually could be genetic, could be age. I mean, my back, lower back pain treatment, not, yeah. Uh, I am, my aunt had it. My aunt was a dancer. I was a dancer. So I don't, who knows what's going to happen with me when I'm going to need it. So symptoms of spinal stenosis, uh, but people may experience pain in the back of the legs, can occur in the leg while exercising. Uh, and muscular abnormality walking. And my mom has that. So like, so it's supposed to help her with her walk. Otherwise she wouldn't be able, eventually she's not gonna be able to walk. That's what it's, I guess down the road it's gonna stay. So I'm concerned and I don't want, uh, you know, I don't want anything to happen to my mom. My mom's all I've got. <laughs> I got family, but you have, when you rely on your mom, it's a different kind of support. It's unconditional love and Although our moms judge us too, like your mom's always going to be there for you. Well, I have that kind of mom and I'm scared to lose her because um, I'm alone, you know, um, but whatever, I'm 40, grow up, Michelle. So <laughs> I know I'm not going to lose her, but I'm just saying like, I don't know. So that's been through my head. So I had this weird dream where my dad was in it, my dad who's passed, my dad was in it. And then he was like doing this Italian thing where you bite your fist when you're aggravated about something. I, I guess he was doing it with his hand. And I was like, dad, are you in pain? And then my mom was on the other side of me. And because I wasn't sure why my dad was doing that. And my mom was on the other side of me and she was like asleep, but like groggy. And I was like, oh, what does this mean? When I woke up. Does this mean that she should not have the surgery? Because my dad was aggravated about something and she was like, kind of out of it. So I woke up, I went outside. I had like a five minute nap yesterday because I got up at like 4 a.m. to write, which was great. And this morning I got up at 9 a.m. So the consistency is there. Uh, so I went outside and I, I was like, the wind was blowing and I was like, what did that mean? What did that mean? Like, how am I going to convince my mom not to have the surgery if that's what it meant? Um, and then I see something poke through my fence that I thought was a squirrel. And I was like, well, that's not a squirrel's tail. And yep, not a mouse, but it was a rat. So this summer I had a little baby bunny that was in the backyard this summer and spring. My daughter was like, a baby bunny, baby bunny's back. He was the cutest. And now baby bunny gone and teenage rat, AKA splinters child from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's what the motherfucker looked like. Go away. There's a garbage dump right on the other side of my fence. There's an apartment complex behind my house that my daughter and I live in. And there's a, all garbage on the ground. You could see it. And then my mom Googled, leave it to your mother when you tell your mom to Google the township. And it says that there's like infestation of rodents. I'll even read it. Um, and yeah, no, not the rat, like the man I last slept with. Oh, I didn't do the joke right. So wait, hold on a second. Let me see. Okay, my mom, of course, immediately sends me the town link. Rodent campaign. There's a campaign for these mother effers. Rodent control is a is an issue that requires community wide solution. My mom's like, call the town. You know what the town's gonna say? Uh, that's what they say. They don't do anything. I don't know what the town workers do. I have no clue because any time I've called them, they're on lunch or it's like two o'clock and they've gone home for the day. Um, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be mad. I don't. I, that was like one time. So. It says, why do we see more rodent activity? 
repeated mild winters, a aging infrastructure and redevelopment, improper trash and waste management practices. Yeah, there's <laughs> improper waste management practices, meaning people throw their shit on the ground. So maybe they need to just pick it up. I don't know, it's gross, but maybe they, it's, I'm just don't, I just, we having family over today from friends and I don't want to have rats partying with us that would put a whole nother spin on my life. Um, so my mom, some rats, and let's get to the love life. Um, so recently, well, we'll get to the love life in a second. I'll, I'm going to share some tweets with you guys, um, that I really liked this week. Um, when I do the 5 a.m. Writers Club on Twitter, it's the fucking best because people are responding to you. They're engaging. Twitter is great for this 5 a.m. Writers Group thing. It's 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 awesome. Um, I, I am starting a festival that requires no fees for writers, comedians, and filmmakers. Cafe Bastella, will you sponsor it? Um, I've been approached a couple times, um, and I'm going to say this on here because I don't have a lot of listeners to this podcast, so fuck it. Um, no, but even if they listened, I'm going to say... The comedy festivals, like I, a lot of people do comedy festivals, like they're like the equivalent to what a film festival is, but for stand up comedy. I'm sorry, I am not giving you money for me to perform on stage. That's not what I went to school. Sorry. Now, here's the hypocrisy in it. Okay. See this degree? And there's another one above it right here. And see? Okay. I have my two degrees. I am 40. And my dad said a while ago, before he passed, he's like, do me a favor. Don't ever pick another job for free as an acting job. He's like, you have earned your dues. Even if it's $20, you get paid. Now he's right. And I, I don't, um, I have done guest spots on local shows for free or like in New York city. If they give me a spot on a stage, it's a little different. Uh, cause I look at it like rehearsal, but if it's a gig, that's not paying. No. Um, I, this is my job, so I have to take it seriously. And I have paid my dues, quote unquote, right? Deferred pay, uh, that's a little different too, but I, the comedy festivals and paying a fee pisses me off, pisses me off. They're like, chance to win $500. Yeah, you ain't picking me. Now the film festivals do the same thing. Film festivals, screenwriting festivals, they do the same thing. They ask you to submit for a fee and then they give it. I won a screenwriting contest and I was ecstatic. It made my fucking week, made my month. It made my summer actually, because it, it, it showed me all of the work I put in was for something. And I made that money back right now. The same thing with comedy festivals, but I literally was approached by, I guess, I guess I'm just kind of bitching about the fact that I would pay for a film festival and not for a comedy festival. <laughs> I mean, the other thing is like, I have been producing my own comedy show for years now. And I guess let's say I started it in traveling. I started it in 2018, 2016 is when it really started to come out. So about six years, I'm not, I'm not, investing money to put into a comedy festival for five minutes of time when my, my business is right now essentially focused on divorce diaries. And I appreciate the reach out, but I was, I just start to get aggravated when like, can you submit a, submit a submission fee? It's like, fuck off. Meanwhile, I'm the biggest hypocrite because I have like my GoFundMe still up for the show. Oh. What's the point of the conversation? I don't know. Could we have a free comedy festival that we just get a cash prize and somebody else who's rich donates to it? Cause most of us artists are not wealthy. All right, so beyond relieved uh, that, oh, and that was the other thing, my, my, my child support finally came through. But before, I think, okay. My, my, my director, Angie, who directed the pilot, she just texted me. We are having a conversation about men last night how the guy that I went out with a couple weeks ago, who was a friend, just kind of dipped out. I mean, he didn't have to do anything, but like I didn't invite him in or I told him no to coming in and then he got upset or I should say, no, he didn't get upset. I just felt like, well, I guess I'm not gonna talk to him anymore. And when I asked him what, why, he said, well, he just thinks we should be friends. I was the one who didn't invite you in. So I don't know. So I haven't talked to him. He isn't checked my story, liked any of my pictures, which means he's probably muted me. Yep, I go that far in assuming that. 
And I'm bummed because I really liked him as a friend, as a person. And now we're not going to talk, which sucks. The cop who I uh, had a rendezvous with, who I dated years ago, we were going to have another rendezvous last week. That didn't happen. And now I voice threaded him. I, I read I read the voice threads on the last episode which is only on YouTube because I forgot to upload it to Anchor. But if you go to my YouTube channel, <laughs> you can see me reading the voice threaded messages. And I believe it's under, um, what did I put it under? Uh, voice text and coffee. Yeah, I really need to make my thumbnails look the same. I think that's the problem with some of this stuff. I, I am working hard at rebuild, at building, not rebuilding, but building all of my, um, you know, building my YouTube channel up even more uh, than, than it has been. Um, all right. So this coming Wednesday, we're going to also have a guest, Noam. He's a Jewish rabbi and he's divorced. Um, I actually, he's kind of cute too. He, I bet you he will not listen to this, so it doesn't matter. But I'm curious to like meet him in person. He lives in California. Um, he's cute. And I've never been with a Jewish guy. I just haven't. Uh, have you? Have you? If, or are you Jewish and you've been? Are you ever been with an Italian girl? Okay. Go where the love is. Okay, that's a big theme of in general. Go where the love is. I've been having a lot of anxiety about finances and money and, and booking enough work and divorce diaries, finding the right investor and all this stuff. And I just um, someone said to me, they're like, "Go where the love is," because I'm like, I'm not getting any responses from these New York City clubs that I want to do actual just stage time on, like get in line, bitch. And then I go on to social media and I, 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 I get lost in people's clips and then you start to see all these other comics ahead of you doing all these new york city spots and i just don't know how to get there because i am limited with my child's care and my situation so i can do divorce diaries and i can try to do other shows when i have availability with child's care and that's what it is right now and i can do this but i get lost in the comparison and my one of my uh, comic colleagues said go where the love is go where the green lights are Lately, I've been getting a lot of yellows from inquiries for clubs, bookers, and it downright hurts. <sighs> I also am getting stuck behind people in the supermarket who are slow as fuck. So what, what does that have to do with the other? I realized that the other day. I was like, why am I constantly getting stuck with people who are moving their slow ass time in the supermarket? And it's because God's telling me to wait just wait it's coming you're gonna get that you're gonna get to the door and you're gonna put your groceries in your car and you're gonna be like yeah boo i have the most weirdest weirdest analogies so um i i did receive something from instagram as an influencer or whatever you want to call it and i woke up so happy i was like oh my god i got really excited for a lot of people it might be, not be nothing but it's, it was something for me because it shows all the hard work I do with my social media content and all the energy and the creation. And I, I honestly truly love creating from the plot podcast to the live show, to the TV series, to um, reels, TikToks. I love it. And um, it made me feel like it's coming. It is coming. It is. It's happening. Right. And then I listened to my producer, David Vox Mullins um, episode with a with a actor um that is um he's got a new quentin peoples and it was about you have feast and famine as an actor as you know an entertainer as a writer you know filmmaker and it's just part of what you sign up for and you have to really accept it he was saying and i at times fear so much like for my kid i want to have such security for her with college and the future and it's like i got to put more into it and I just don't have it now. So I'm hoping um, that I can continue to just stay on that path because I don't, I think the biggest fear I have, not so much as, you know, me is, is her looking at me like, you, you know, you're still struggling, mom. Why are you doing this? And I don't want her to ever look at me like that. Um, I think that's my biggest fear, uh, you know, cause I'm 40 and I, shifted back to acting from teaching full-time so there's a struggle there 
there's a shift financially. I mean, I teach part-time and I love the college that I teach at as I fix my shirt when I say I teach at a college. Um, and I love the program. I, it's, I'm all about it, but my, my goal, like I've said before on the podcast and then everything is to have this show on a network and produce more episodes and seasons and expand it into other shows and films and, uh, you know, keep recreating this one woman comedy show into maybe something even more that's not just a one woman comedy show that's a traveling show with the writers and the actors on the show so i hope that um i can keep tuning into where the love is and not fear so much like i did on the last episode and i hope this rat goes away <laughs> i hope no more rats pop out um I think, I think last episode or in the episode before that was a fear and, you know, this one, I, I really think that if we just trust fear and faith, I guess fear and faith go hand in hand, right? Like if you have faith, you won't have fear or will you still have fear? Maybe, right? But you have to have faith. So I'm going to really practice that in my day to day of having the faith to um, trust that stuff will keep coming what that you put out there and ed Milet says that all his stuff and i love him um i don't know about you but i'm excited to continue on with the summer even though i know half the, the country has gone back to school we have not and we still have about two weeks left and i'm excited to share wednesday's guest noam i think it's roger i'm probably mispronouncing it um and I, i'm gonna ask him how to say his last name he, and we will be talking about divorce, dating, and I am curious about studying Judaism. So he's going to give me some beginner tips on where I would start to learn more about Judaism. So, um, and, and the faith practice of that, you know, I, I'm all about learning about all different kinds of religions and spirituality. So like, I want to learn about specifically how I can use Judaism to calm the F down <laughs> and have more faith. So uh, I'm excited. I am so happy for you guys to tune in to Divorce Diary Show podcast. And obviously you're on my YouTube channel. Click the script subscribe button. Stay tuned for more happily divorced after. Keep on living your uh, happily divorced after life. And if you're not divorced, just keep on living your happily ever after life. Because not every moment can be happy. But if you live in a blissful state, and I don't know, I'm gonna keep going in, into circles. Be you and be uh, excited about the journey.